let's start the video with my favorite place on the planet right here you know why i'm starting this way is because you know i call this channel watching the world burn i don't think a lot of you know we almost all burned this past saturday Stoltenberger came in to Biden and they were going to sign that piece of paper to launch missiles deep into Russia. Uh, of course, according to Colonel Douglas McGregor, it could have been a missile that took out that uh, second ammo dump in Russia. That hasn't been confirmed as far as I know. But uh, anyway, from what I understand, there were back channels that came in. And Russia said, if you do sign that piece of paper and launch missiles deep into Russia. These are the targets we're going to hit. And they gave the Pentagon a list of targets that they were going to hit. Now, I don't know if those were going to be conventional weapons, hypersonic missiles, or nuclear weapons. But uh, I'm just thankful to be alive and to be healthy. God, I was sick as a dog. Speaking of the dog, the, the old battle axe took him back yesterday. So don't have a dog no more. So anyway, it's her dog. I just get to see, spend some time with him from time to time. Check out the bird. All right, let's get in to the video. Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. September 23rd, 2024. Let's get into it. I wanted to read a post that I put up on X. And uh, the reason I put this up was I was... Um, I don't know, I love using Grok, and I was going, I wonder what Grok has to say about the apocalypse. And uh, so I was just messing around, and he came up with this, and I went, I'll be damned. I hadn't really thought about all of this. So, you know, the, I started the video, we almost launched uh, missiles in deep into Russia, which would have brought about Armageddon. So, I, you know, I'll just read the post to you. If we launch missiles into Russia, we face Armageddon. Christians need to wake up as the warmongering, totalitarian, and free speech, fascist, perhaps satanic, Marxist, communist, Democrats lead us into a global thermonuclear war. Now, I got a comment. They said, why do you hate Democrats so much, you know, that cybersecurity guy? Why are you so hard on the Democrats? Well, I encourage you to read this book right here. Crime Incorporated. How Democrats employ mafia and gangster tactics to gain and hold power. You understand that these Venezuelan gangs and everything that's taken place, they're all in cahoots with the Democrats. They are, they work together. In fact, the Democrats make a lot of money from the mafia and from the drug trade and from child trafficking and from human trafficking and from raping uh, men, raping women in brothels. That's where the Democrats get a lot of their money. Just saying. I'm just saying, read this book if you don't believe me. This is by uh, Vince Everett Ellison, a black dude, wrote the book. Let's continue with my post. The four horsemen of the apocalypse are figures from the Christian Bible. A lot of Christians haven't, don't even remember the four horsemen, but uh, some do. Specifically mentioned in the book of Revelation chapter 6, here is a brief description of each. Now, one of the things that I can tell you is that when you go to your church, do you ever talk about the apocalypse? Do you ever talk about politics or how important this election is going to be to the future of the United States? No. No, because they're all full of hot air. Do you talk about the genocide taking place in, uh, in Gaza? Or do you talk about the fact that 200 and some Lebanese just died today with U.S. bombs from Israel, Israeli planes? No, no, we don't talk about these things. These things aren't, they're not church related. We're just going to all be fluff and have our choirs sing hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. All right, so the conquest, conquest or pestilence, often depicted riding a white horse. The horseman is traditionally interpreted as representing conquest or pestilence. Though some modern interpretations see him as the Antichrist. And then I put in there, the U.S. Empire has 800 bases around the world. Is that conquest? I don't know. You tell me. Do we really need 800 bases around the world? What about what's going on here in the United States? Why don't we uh, uh, secure our border or send some, 
some of these troops into the cities to uh, to stop. I mean, look at Philadelphia. From what I understand, there was some some activity that took place there. I haven't gotten all the details yet, but uh, I know there was some communist marching and that there might have been some riots there. But no, no, we're going to maintain 800 bases around the world uh, as as we starve as Americans, as we are poisoned by processed food, pestilence, pestilence, war rides a red horse. He's given the power to take peace from the earth, making people kill one another, symbolizing war and violence. And then I see Ukraine and Israel. Look at what the Democrats have done. They're the Democrats. The Democrats are the war, war party. They've been endorsed by Dick Cheney, man. <laughs> that dude killed a million people in, uh, in, in uh, Iraq. And he's endorsing, guess who? I'm, thank God he didn't endorse Trump. I would have questioned Trump then. I would have said, Trump, man, you need to say, hell no, I ain't taking no damn endorsement from Dick Cheney. Oh, my God. And, and the Bushes, uh, the, the biggest warmongers in the history of the country. Uh, I, oh, my God. Uh, anyway, so um, let's uh, let's get the first video because I wanted to talk a bit about uh, Gaddafi. I was talking about him in a previous video, and every now and then you come across something. Well, you know that Hillary Clinton killed him. Well, maybe now we know the reason why. Let's watch that video now. الأمم المتحدة الجمعية العامة المتحدة بتفتح ملف اغتيال كان دي الرئيس الأمريكي لماذا؟ نبغى نعرفه قتله واحد اسمه لي هارفي جاء واحد اسمه جاك روبي قتل لي هارفي قاتل كندي لماذا قتله؟ لي جاك روبي إسرائيلي قتل لي هارفي اللي قاتل كندي. لماذا هذا الإسرائيلي يقتل قاتل كندي ثم جاك روبي قاتل قاتل كندي مات قبل إعادة محاكمته في ظروف غامضة لماذا أرجع الملفات لازم نعرفها أنا اللي نعرفها والعالم ممكن يعرفها واللي درسها في التاريخ أن كندي قرر تفتيش مفاعل ديمونة لإسرائيلي هل في قنابل ذرية وإلا لا وعلشان كده تم تخلص منه all right, so that was a video on Gaddafi. Uh, he died a few months after that. Hmm. Hmm. The Democrats killed him. Why do you think the Democrats killed him? Famine. Mounted on a black horse. This horseman carries scales, symbolizing the scarcity of food and famine that follows war. Well, we sold a lot of our farmland to Bill Gates. China's buying up a lot of our farmland. Uh, we're being poisoned by the, uh, and I say corporate takeover of our food supply. The corporations have taken over your food supply. Go to a meat packing plant and see what you, I, you'll puke your guts out, man. It's the most disgusting place on the planet. And it doesn't have to be that way. We need to clean all this up. We need good food. Like I said, go to your local farmer's market, support them. I was at, I'm going to give you an example. I was at the farmer's market and a whole pineapple. I couldn't believe it. It was a buck. Even at today, I mean, even with the dollar being practically worthless, I bought a whole damn pineapple for a buck. Now, was it a lot of work to sit there and skin that thing and cut it up into pieces? Yeah, it was a, it was a bit of work. Hey, I got always want to give you a good tip. I came up with a new, uh, you know, I'm, isn't it amazing how we get older? I mean, when you're a kid, you hate broccoli. <laughs> you know, now I like broccoli and cheese, right? Uh, anyway, I, I've always been, hated squash, man. I mean, I, I've never been a squash fan. Uh, but, uh, you know, my ex-wife, uh, she, she one time she fried up some squash and I thought, well, you know what, this isn't bad. And, and so then, you know, I started, you know, reading recipes and watching YouTube channels. And the, so finally I, I said, you know what, I don't, I don't, I'm not going with any of these recipes. I'm making my own. All right. And so what I had was a can of diced tomatoes. So the first thing you do is you slice up that onion. Get you a whole big onion, man. Put about three quarters of that onion in the frying pan. And then you want to cook it on me medium heat until those those uh that onion turns uh, brown you know it's uh, what do they call it uh, galvanized or whatever uh, there's a word for that i'll put it on up above and uh and then then you add in your squash okay and uh and and then mix that together and let that cook for a while and of course then you you know i i add spices you want thyme uh garlic uh basil some oregano uh some sea salt some pepper, and then what I also cut, because I, I have a ton of peppers, I cut some peppers up in there, some jalapenos, some banana peppers, I cut all them up just to spice it up a little bit, uh, and then you, you cook it on medium heat, and you say, but nobody ever tells you how long to cook it, 
right? And now, of course, you want a lid too, because you got to get the, the top, and then, of course, you're constantly stirring it. And uh, so, anyway, it's, it's you cook it until you can take a fork and just slice right through one of those pieces of squash where they're kind of, you don't want to mushy, you don't want to go too far, but you want it so that you just go right through it, and then, then that's it, you're done. And man, and then of course you, the diced tomatoes, you add that in while you're cooking too. And uh, man, I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> I can't eat enough of it, man, I'm loving it. All right, enough on the recipe, sorry about that. Death rides a pale horse. Death is followed by Hades, the underworld. And they are given authority over a quarter of the earth to kill by sword, famine, plague, and wild beasts. Ah, do you remember the jab? Do you remember the, the mandates? Do you remember uh, uh, being locked in your houses for a year, especially if you were in a Democrat state? <laughs> you remember the small businesses being shut down? Huh? The Democrats did all that. The Democrats did all that, huh? Yeah, we did a little bit here in Florida, but we were free within a month. Oh my God, that's why we call it the free state of Florida. DeSantis is all the way. All right, so the United States and Israel have embarked on a war mission to destroy the world. Where are your religious leaders? Where are your religious leaders? Are they talking about this? Are they talking about the death of the world? Are they talking about Armageddon? Are they talking about nuclear, uh, the Holocaust of the world? Five billion, 72 million, it's five billion people will be dead and the rest of the people on the planet that are alive are gonna wish they were dead. Are your religious leaders talking about that? Are they talking about what really matters to the, to the people of the planet? Uh, where are the religious? They seem to be absent from their God. Don't you think God would want you as a religious leader talking about nuclear war and how we need to stop the Democrats from killing all of us? Wake up. It's all political and get it, get your heads out of the sand. And then I list the, uh, so I'm talking to Christians, Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, Catholics, Shintos, Skiism, Judaism, Taoism, Confucianism, and Kadassism. Talking all religions, not just Christians. Although I blame Christians most of all. They, they're supposedly, oh, I believe in God. All right, let's get into some posts. This is a great post. Uh, can you imagine this on a metro train in Washington, D.C.? <laughs> it would never happen. This is a Russian metro, and they just break out in this song, and I'm, let's watch that video. that was great uh, this is uh, by the way a, a channel I encourage you to go to is the Duran uh, they do a lot of great coverage on the uh, on everything and, and I tell you this guy uh, Alexander he's like a walking encyclopedia but don't trust me listen to JFK as he talks about him but uh, you I heard you on the Duran podcast and sure. you know one of my kids asked me the other day what podcasts I consider indispensable and I if I had only one podcast that I would listen to it would be the Duran podcast I think anybody who wants to understand U.S. foreign policy but also pop foreign policy um, Alexander on that podcast is such an encyclopedic knowledge of Absolutely. you know of politics around the globe and Latin America and Africa and Asia and Russia and China it's really quite, quite breathtaking, and to, to me, it's just a joy to listen to, and I never, I never miss any of his podcasts. I don't always agree with everything, but I would agree with probably 90% of the stuff that they say on there, and it's, 
everything they say is brilliant. There's um, everything they say is is just brilliant. All right, so that's a video by JFK. This is Mike Engelman. 45% of the country will vote Democrat no matter what. Yep, that's for sure, because they're vacuous meat puppets. Uh, they could literally lose everything they own, and eventually they will, yet they will still vote Democrat. D dumbest people on earth. <laughs> now, see, I'm not the only one saying this, right? Okay, I just, I just wanted to throw that out. Breaking, more American troops are on their way to the Middle East to die for Israel. Pentagon, they will join the Israeli army or crippled by Hamas, which alone cannot invade Lebanon now. That's from Megatron. I don't know if that's true. I'm just reading you what he had to say. Uh, Dan Cohen, Israel will be able to destroy more of Lebanon than Hezbollah. By the way, did you see that Moab in my last video? That's the mother of all bombs. I supposedly, some people said it was a nuclear bomb, but there was no nuclear fallout. So I'm, I'm about 100% certain it wasn't a nuclear bomb. That was a Moab called the mother of all bombs. So we'll swap if they win a geriatric Alzheimer's patient in Joe Biden for one flew over the cuckoo's nest. And I don't even mean nurse ratchet. You wouldn't give her a bedpan to empty. You wouldn't give her a bed to make. You wouldn't give her a floor to sweep, but you're gonna give her the nuclear codes? You're gonna put her in charge of the world's most powerful military? You're gonna put her in charge of the world's second biggest economy? Well, you're dafter than she is, if you do. But the big events are unfolding for the moment. Attention could switch back in a minute to the Eastern Front to the Ukraine, to the river Dnieper, to the great Russian city of Odessa, to the Black Sea coast. At any minute, an exchange of weapons could destroy a nuclear plant, sending it up into the air in a giant mushroom and its radioactivity headed your way. That could happen any minute. But what is happening right this minute is an all-out war in the Holy Land. I know these places well. Jezin, which may well have been bombed with a nuclear device. If not a nuclear device, then definitely a vacuum bombs. Definitely a Moab, the mother of all bombs that Trump uh, uh, fired at the uh, people of Afghanistan, just to put them even further back into the Stone Age, just before Joe Biden scuttled out of the country and left them hundreds of billions of dollars worth of top American military material and weaponry. That kind of bomb, look at it, it's a mushroom cloud. And where did they drop it? On Jezin. What's in Jezin? The holy Christian places where Jesus walked. I'd been there. I'd been in the cave where the Last Supper was held. These are amongst the holiest places in Christendom that are now on fire. Nazareth is on fire. Nazareth. From where Jesus came, from which Mary and Joseph were forced to head for Jerusalem, ending up in Bethlehem, giving birth in a stable. Bethlehem is on fire where Jesus was born. There are bombs exploding by the minute. In 40 minutes, Israel landed 50 air attacks on Lebanon. Hundreds are being killed. And that's just with the bombs. I saw today that Israel is denying any involvement in the pager terrorist attack. A pager! terrorist attack that maimed thousands of people, murdered dozens of people, blew people's eyes out, hands off, blew their legs off. Having spent the week basking in the Mossad's cleverness, Israel insists today that it had no involvement in the pager attack. Coming up next, the Pope is not a Catholic and bears deny 
defecating in the woods. For whom was this denial intended? Who in the world will believe that Israel was not involved in this pager attack? Even the idiot savants of the Western media won't dare to print something as insultingly, obviously false as that. But we've moved on from the pager attack, which was undoubtedly a major, perhaps the major act of terrorism since 9-11. Think about it. Thousands of victims in an instant, wherever they were, whoever they were, Many of the pagers were sold to doctors and nurses in Lebanon's hospitals. They got their hands blown off. They got their eyes blown out. These victims are wiped away from the public consciousness in the West by the simple application of the H word. Any Arab, if you call them an H, you can justify, and they justify, murdering them, whatever age they are, even if they're small children, even if they're babies, even if they're women, even if they're doctors, even if they're nurses, teachers, shopping assistants, checkout operators, petrol station, pump attendants, call them H. Houthis, Hamas, Hezbollah, According to Piers Morgan, it was a Hezbollah pager attack, even though we have seen the pictures of hundreds of victims who by definition cannot be Hezbollah, not least because they're three years old, not least because they are small children. Anyway, it's hit the fan as you, some of you were mocking me the other week for telling you that this was all going to happen, it's already now happening. Israel is pulverizing Lebanon. Lebanon is pulverizing Israel, setting fire everywhere in both countries. And Iran is about to speak. Question is, what does the West do then? Yeah, yeah, Christians. The Israelis are blowing up all your holy sites. The Nazarene, gone. History, man. So if you want to go over to Lebanon and visit these sites, gone, baby. Yeah, Christians, keep supporting your Israelis. Ah, right. But Israel is not accustomed to the damage Hezbollah will be able to inflict for an extended period of time. Israel's national psyche, traumatized, weak, and divided, uh, <clears throat> will stand such pressure. If this is a war of ideology, Zionism is built to last. Is it built to last? Whereas the ideology of the axis of resistance draws from a deeper well, Israel is initiating a full-scale war on Lebanon. Looks to be another escalation in the process of its own implosion and self-destruction. So I want to read that because that's exactly how I feel. You know, when you when you do a terrorist act, I mean, four four thousand uh, devices blew up. Mostly women, doctors, nurses, children. Uh, a lot of people are blind now. That's an act of terrorism. And yet, you got Sean Hannity and the talking heads. We need to support Israel. Send your money to Israel if, you, if you're a Christian. Oh, yeah, yeah, send your money. Send your money to Israel. I got it. Uh, this is uh, Elon Musk. We need multiple fish launches, launches to, licenses to launch a rocket, actually. And let's watch that video. Currently, the limiting factor for SpaceX for Starship launch is regulatory approval. Uh, the FAA has actually given their approval, but we're, we're waiting for Fish and Wildlife to uh, finish their analysis and give their approval. That, that's why I posted, I want to buy a fish license on, <laughs> which also refers to the Monty Python sketch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, why do you need a license for your fish? I, I don't know. <laughs> why, but according to the rules, I'm told you need a some sort of fish license or something. We effectively need a fish license to launch a rocket. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a second. How did the fish come into the picture? Yeah. Um, 
I mean, so, some of the things like that, that it's, I feel like are so absurd that I want to do like a comedy sketch and flash at the bottom. This is all real. This yeah. is actually what happened. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, one of the things that was a bit of a challenge at one point is that they were worried about, uh, a rocket hitting a shark. Mm-hmm. And, um, you now the ocean is very big and, uh, how often do you see sharks? Uh, not that often, you know. As a percentage of ocean surface area, sharks basically go zero. Then we said, well, how will we calculate the probability of, of telling a shark? And they're like, well, we can't give you that information because we're, they're worried about shark hunt, shark fin hunters, uh, going and hunting sharks. And I said, well, how are we supposed to? We're on the horns of a dilemma then. <laughs> then they said, well, there's another part of fish and wildlife that can, can do this analysis. I'm like, well, why don't you give them the data? I'm like, we don't. They don't, we don't trust them. Like, excuse me? You don't, they're literally in your department. Yeah, and again, yeah. this is actually what happened. And, and then can you do an NDA or something? <laughs> Eventually, they managed to solve the internal quandary and indeed, uh, the probability of, say, of a sitting shock is essentially zero. Then there's another organization that I didn't realize existed until, uh, you know, a few months ago, uh, that cares about whether you, we would potentially hit a whale in international waters. Now, again, you look at the surface of the, Look at the look at the Pacific and say, what percentage of this, the Pacific consists of whale? Like he'll give you a big picture and like point out all the whales in this picture. I'm like, I don't see any whales. <laughs> it's like basically zero percent. For launching out of Vandenberg in California, they were worried about uh, seal procreation, whether the seals would be dismayed by the sonic booms. Um, now there have been a lot of rockets launched out of Vandenberg, and the seal population has uh, steadily increased. Um, so if anything, rocket booms are an aphrodisiac, um, based on the evidence, if you correlate rocket launches with, uh, seal population. Mm-hmm. Um, nonetheless, we were forced to kidnap a seal, strap it to a board, put it headphones on the seal, and play sonic boom sounds to it to see if it would be distressed. This is an actual thing that happened. This is actually real. I have pictures. <laughs> I would love to see this. Yeah, there's, I mean, a, sorry, there's a seal? a seal with headphones. <laughs> yes, it's a seal with headphones yeah. strapped to a board, and and like the okay. The the amazing part is how calm the seal was. Yeah, because if I was a seal, I'd be like, this is the end. <laughs> <laughs> They're definitely gonna eat me yeah. when the seal goes back to other, you know, its seal friends. How's he gonna explain that? I'm never going to believe them. Never going to believe them. That's why I'm like, well, you know, it's sort of like it's like getting kidnapped by aliens and getting an anal probe, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you come back and say, I swear to God, yeah. I got kidnapped by aliens and they stuck an anal probe in my butt. And you're like, no, they didn't. Yeah. <laughs> That's ridiculous. It's it seal some, it seal buddies are never going to believe him that he gets strapped to a board and they put headphones on his ears. <laughs> <laughs> and then let him go. <laughs> I don't think the public is quite aware of the, the madness that goes on. So that was Elon Musk. And then this is, we'll finish the video right here. This is Marjorie, Marjorie Taylor Greene press, uh, ONG. Japanese Trump supporters in Japan are marching on the streets in support of Trump. And it's got this picture, well, you watch the video. Isn't that cute? Ah, uh, we'll go one more here. Hold on. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is right. Ever since America stepped away from worshiping God, everything went downhill. We should all worship God. Yeah, you Christians out there. Why don't you talk a little bit about nuclear war, huh? Here's what RFK on Christ is King. You know, the same friends of Assisi said that we should turn our lives into a prayer so that we're in conscious contact with God every waking moment of the day and not just, you know, pray by road in the morning or at night, but to turn everything we do when we're eating, when we're exercising, when we're doing our work, that all of that should be um, performed as a, as a prayer. You know, I try to do that. And I try to keep God close to me mm-hmm. all the time and to continue to maintain that posture of surrender. And that is the challenge for all of us. How do we stay, you know, in that posture of God's will rather than, you know, self-will? I need to stay in conscious contact with God.
God every moment of my day, and that's what I endeavor to do. I don't always do it perfectly, but I, I try every day. Peace out. Stay free. I've just signed Executive Order 20-01, declaring a peacetime state of emergency for the state of Minnesota. We need to stop congregating. We're going to close the bars. We're going to close the restaurants. We're going to close the places where we gather. Several hundred thousand of your neighbors were just laid off. An entire industry has been shut down in the face of this, all for the greater good. The governor, with the power of the state constitution behind him, has issued 104 executive orders affecting everything from schools to restaurants and bars to churches to basically every facet of everyday life. Democrats who control the House are moving in the opposite direction. Some are pushing to put a mask mandate in state law. Hi, ho, the Jerio. I wear a mask to school. It helps to keep me safe. Explosive testimony from a Minneapolis police union official who says that the governor ordered cops to abandon that third precinct during the spring's rioting. I was in the command post. I heard it. I heard the governor say, give it up. At 932, Chief Arredondo calls the mayor to tell him they've lost control, can no longer maintain order in the city. And then at 1013, Chief Arredondo, who's monitoring the scene from a couple blocks away, gets in the radio to announce defeat. It is citywide tone right now in our loss of the third precinct. The third precinct has been compromised. The mayor said I requested the National Guard. Ooh, I'm out this great. We're going to have massively trained troops. No, you're going to have 19-year-olds who are cooks. 